Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and today I want to talk a bit about um, yeah things uh, that could help you attaching e-powers to graphics cards so I uh, you know I talked about how about, how about recently I got two more of these so this is an EG, uh, EVGA e-power 5 and I don't know if I talked about this but I also made another one of these uh, I made one that was basically identical before this was once a GTX 580 direct CO2 um, and I had another one of them and that one died and so I turned it into an ePower 2. Both of these have dual outputs, so core and uh, memory. Uh, I might need to remove some more solder mask here, but uh, yeah, so basically the idea is that I can use both of these kinds of ePowers um, to power a graphics card like this, um, where I have core power and uh, memory power. So what I've done here is I've uh, dremeled away the uh, solder mask for a large portion of the PCB. So this is where the vCore VRM used to be and this is where the memory VRM used to be. And um, this specific card might actually not work out. This is the um, Zotac GTX 680 from a long, long time ago. Um, I had it e-powered once. Um, which worked not that well. Uh, my, my soldering was really, really bad. Then I read that the e-power, and then I had an issue of the card would like be really unstable on the memory, and I had no idea how. Like I tried some fixes, none of them worked. Basically, the card would only run memory at like one gigahertz instead of the like stock three gigahertz, um, which basically like ruined performance completely. Um, and I was just like, well, like the card at least fired up. Um, so that's, I guess. Um, so either way, if this one works out or not, I want to use this as e-powering practice because I uh, want to start making more proper e-powers. So I could, um, yeah, I think I'm going to get my very first e-power that I made and show it to you. That would be uh, this GTX 970 here. And uh, this one's using a single output GTX 580. Like this is also a GTX 580, but a reference card um, ePower. Very first ePower I ever made, actually. Um, and this one only has core ePower, like the memory VRM is still on the card. Um, and as you can see, like I use uh, wires, very long wires, and the PCB like doesn't have any solder mask removed. I just remove the inductors and then solder to the MT pad, um, which. Uh, is not very good for having uh, very good uh, power connections because uh, yeah it's uh, yeah I'm gonna lose a lot of voltage on that e-power. The card actually works rather well uh, probably because 970s don't pull that much current but uh, uh, yeah um, <laughs> and yeah I wanna stop making e-powers like that so the um, more proper way is to of course get more connection points and that's by removing all your solder mass. So um, I think I should uh, take a screwdriver to point. So this down right here is our vCore output of course. So basically the uh, VRM on a reference 680 looks a bit weird because it like 12 volt goes in here and then here's the buck converter and you have an output here. Usually it's like 90 degrees rotated where 12 volt comes in here, then you have your VRM and then your output power plane looks like this. Um, on 680s, well, for some reason NVIDIA decided to rotate it. Um, so we have up, down instead of uh, right, left. Um, doesn't change the idea though, it's just a bit annoying for uh, putting on your e-powers because like, usually you have your e-power like this, and I'm going to have it like this. And you see the problem, if I want to have my core hooked up correctly, first off, I'm going to have my memory in a weird location. Second of all, I'm not going to be able to put a heatsink on the core. So I'm going to have to, well, either do it like this and then have really long collection connections here, or like, like this, and then have this misaligned and the memory is still pretty far away from where it usually goes. Which is why I'm kind of considering doing like getting like one of these smaller e-powers because then at least the core is more aligned. Um, yeah. Um, but that's not really what the video is about. So what I actually want to uh, talk about is um, how to get better connections. So the first thing that you can do 
is instead of um, using cables is use copper plates. Um, I actually bought some copper plates that uh, I will need to cut and use instead um, and a couple people use this and it like it first off it looks really cool and second of all it's um, apparently a lot lot better um, for your connections. So if you want to see how to make one of these uh, Shaggy SBK has uh, some videos that he put up recently where he e-powers I think a 9800 GT and then two GTX 260s um, using the e-power 5 and some copper plates um, and basically that's it like instead of using cables use copper plates you have an effectively wider power plane like instead of having many many thin cables you have one very wide uh, copper plate which is um, yeah, much more in the form of like your power planes that you usually have. Um, and also I think the um, copper plate is like more efficient in terms of having like cross section. Um, Cause like, yeah, the cables might be a bit thicker than a copper plate is, but like you need a lot of cables to get like the same width that uh, a copper plate has. So a copper plate's more space efficient in terms of like how much conductor you get per like space you use up on the PCB. Um, and then the second one is, well, stretching off all your solder masks. Now you can do that with a screwdriver. I used to do it with a screwdriver. Every cut I did that to died, <laughs> so <laughs> there's kind of a risk involved. Um, to be fair, all the cuts I used my Dremel on also didn't work because the I had a grand total of one and that cut was dodgy from the beginning. Um, but like basically the proper, the most proper way to do this is like use a Dremel like I did here. Um, there is a risk of doing, going a bit too deep. You can kind of see it like here in these parts or like over here or over here. I went a bit too deep. Um, so this is not like a black spot of solder mask that I left. No, I actually went so deep that I went through the copper layer and uh, I am now in the in, uh, like inter, what's it, interpane material, like the, the, the stuff they have between the copper layers. So if I go a bit deeper, I'm gonna find another copper layer um, and if you reach that, you might have a problem because uh, you might accidentally short that lower layer to the top layer and then you have a big problem. Um, so there is kind of a risk with going too deep, but as long as you only go into like this mid layer material, you'll, you'll be fine. Um, but like be careful about that. Um, and yeah, so what scratching the solar mask first does to you, first of all, well, you get a lot more of your VCO power plane to solder to. And you also get a lot more ground. So um, ground spots are very, very important for e-powering. They are actually the most important thing. Um, so, like you want to have a lot of ground. You want to have more ground than V-Core, like more ground than anything else combined, um, because that that's just like how your connection works the best. Um, and ground spots, well, there, there are quite a few ground spots that you can get on a graphics cards PCB. Most of them are not really that great though. So for example, you have uh, screw holes like these. Um, screw holes are ground. You can use them, but they're not meant for power transfer. So a screw hole connection to like the main ground power plane is not through a very wide power plane. So screw holes are not very good at carrying current. Um, then you also have things like capacitor holes. Those are connected properly to big power planes. Um, the problem with capacitors is more like that. You, you see they're pretty small. You can't really solder a cable to that or a copper plane very well. Um, so you need so you need a place where you have a big ground power plane that you can easily solder to. That's also well connected to the main ground power plane of the PCB. And the best way to get there is to just scratch your solar mass. Um, and yeah, so we have our ground, uh, we have VCOR here, and that's the big part. And then we have the switch nodes. Now this is where the uh, MOSFETs meet, like the, your inductor would sit here, and then your inductor output is kind of here. Um, this in between layer, I don't actually know what that is, that might be ground on the PCB, let's check that. Then you have a ground layer right there. Um, So these little tabs are also ground. Yep, that's ground. Like, oh, never mind. I need to because the core's still on the PCB. Because like, 
Yeah, the core is yeah, core is like ten ohms. Now, but this is yeah, that that's that's a ground plane. So that's cool. So this layer here is actually a ground plane already on this PCB. So you have a relatively nice ground power plane, but you can make it nicer because um, you also have this, which is where the low sides connect to. That's also ground. There always has to be a ground, otherwise your low side MOSFETs won't work. So the... Um, I shouldn't get this wrong. I think the source of the ground of the low side MOSFET is always connected to a ground like the small end you see like these three little tabs like like a, a normal discrete MOSFET has three connectors it has the big pad that's for the low side MOSFET is the switch node then you have one tab that's the gate for turning the MOSFET on and off and then there's three more tabs that are the um, like the small tabs and for the lower side that's always ground so you have these ground layers even if this one didn't exist you would still have this ground layer. And what you can do is, because we've removed all the MOSFETs for our ePower, this layer is now completely unused. It's not connected to anything. Like you can see, there's, uh, it's, there's nothing that's connected to it. Um, you can take this ground layer and connect it to the switch node. Like you can see, you can see on the resistance meter, this is not connected to anything. We have infinite ohms. So you can just basically simulate a shorted out low side MOSFET. Just take, um, like the names are a bit comp bit weird because you know like electrons are negative. So the tech, like in in physics and in uh, engineering, like the direction of current is reversed. Uh, so that that's why the input of a MOSFET is called the drain and the output is called a source because like it's about the elect where the electrons go. Um, but basically, you uh, you connect the source portion of the low side to the drain portion of the low side, and then your your switch node layer here, which is a very nice big layer, um, because usually you have the big pad of two low side MOSFETs and an inductor connected to it. So this is a big, very nice layer. You connect that to ground, and then you have a big, very nicely connected ground power plane that you can solder to. And of course, on this PCB, uh, we have this here as well, so we can just connect that too to have an even better connection. And then, what we can do, we, we take our two copper power, uh, we take our two copper plates. Um, just, yeah, I think best would be to like put one in this area, and then uh, core in this sort of area. We have to avoid these because these are ground. But the you can kind of see it. The uh, top leg of the capacitor is core, and then the lower one is ground. So we can go for our core plate in this area, and the ground plate in this area. And uh, that would basically be the most proper way to connect our e power, because then we have very very good uh, a big point of ground to solder to that's very well connected electrically. Um, we only need two connections. Like, I think the best part would be to, like, connect the ground plate first to the e-power, then put the e-power on, on the PCB, and then once that's attached, you take your core plate and connect it, connect that. Um, yeah. And it's a similar thing with the memory. So we can measure our resistance again. This should, this is, like, the output, like, we get 120. That's actually rather high for memory resistance, but, yeah. So this is our uh, memory output, and then this over here should be a very big uh, ground plane because, like, the reference 680, you can kind of see it, that's a leftover pad. There's, like, three SP caps here, like, one here, one here, one here. Um, so this is positive. Like, for, for memory, that's a big enough place to solder to. We could also, like, solder to this. Um, we could, again, use these switch nodes for ground, but on the reference 680, we actually have a very nice ground power plane right here. That's probably easier to access because the core e power is like gonna cover basically this part of the card already. Um, so yeah, that, that that's just kind of a thing that um, is very useful to know for making e powers. It's just like know that you need a lot of ground, 
and know that you can get that amount of ground and also just better like core and memory connections by scratching away the solder mask and potentially using your now empty switch nodes as more ground by connecting them to the adjacent ground power planes. So that's I think basically what I wanted to say. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's basically what I wanted to say. Um, so that's kind of the idea of how I want to make my e-powers in the future. Um, I'm not entirely, like I do want to try fire this one up. Uh, if it ends up working again, then that should, like I, I never, I tried, like I never figured out what the actual issue on the card is. It's just like the memory would be very unstable for like, and, and not like all the time. If you use a program that doesn't use a lot of VRAM, it would be completely stable. But then once you use more than like 700 megabytes of memory, it, the car will just crash if you don't set the memory speed to like really, really low. So it's not like that there's just a broken memory chip. Uh, it's just like very weird intermittent issue <laughs> on the card. The, um, yeah. So like GPU pies would still be fine for, or like I think CloudGate still ran on this. Um, but like Firestrike or TimeSpy, like that needs more than 700 megabytes of memory, so that wouldn't run on this card. Um, so I might even, I might actually still do GPU Pi on this. Um, uh, but even if the card ends up not working, I just want to have this as solar practice, uh, because the last time I made an ePower was my uh, 780 with my first ePower 5, and that one was still on cables, and I didn't scratch the solder mask on that one. Um, that card worked semi well, but uh, I kind of want to redo it. It's just that I don't know if I will, because the card kind of works well enough so that I feel like I don't absolutely have to redo it. Um, so I have this card because I already wrote this card off as dead a long, long time ago, and it was just sitting uh, in, like, uh, on a shelf, uh, and and I was just like, well, I have all these extra e powers now. I could just try. Um, properly attaching one to this, um, and I'm not really risking anything if I uh, like mess up. So, yeah, um, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Just like how to properly attach an e-power. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be filming the process of attaching the e-power because it like usually takes a long time, and positioning a camera would be kind of weird. Uh, but you can watch Shaggy SVK's videos. Uh, he has the process uh, recorded on how he attaches the e-power, just like basically the entire process. So if you want to know what it looks like, uh, go give uh, his videos a watch. Um, and uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna make a follow-up video to this because like it's just solar practice. Um, if it works out really, really well, then I guess I'm gonna make something on it. But like, yeah. The, the main the main part of showing this is just like I want to explain some of the theory of um, like how to get a better e power and uh, yeah that's it so thank you all for watching hope you enjoyed hope you learned something and until next time goodbye.